Okay, so uh, one more video we have to do on the slab. Um, right now the slab is just a regular surface. And if I go back to where my slab was, if I can remember where my slab is, that's not it. I need to start labeling these things better. Uh, the slab. Oh, floor slabs. Huh. That's the only one I actually did label. Oh, look at that. All right, so uh, the slabs themselves right now are a foot thick or a half a foot thick, right? But this surface is not. Now, I want us to be able to um, modify this so that it is going to borrow the same properties, right? So the floor slab thicknesses are all going to be the same. Um, and one of the things that I want to do in order to make it um, sort of regulated is I'm going to start, and I probably should have done this a long time, but I'm going to pull this off to the side as, as a constant, right? So all my floor slabs, they're all going to be the same thickness. So if I make a wireless connection for this and I pull it off to the side, I can put it in my bank of constants. So um, let me just do that real fast. Param primitive number plug this in here. I can call this slab thickness. Make it wireless. That way I can place this here and then move uh, the original number up into the corner where I can just start collecting some of these constant values. And in fact, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but number sliders, I don't think I went through this in detail, number sliders can be renamed as well. If you double click it, you can go up to the top and call it slab thickness. That's an option too if you wanted to go that route. Okay, so uh, that is now a wireless connector that goes all the way down here. But I'm gonna use this, let me make a copy of it. I'm gonna use this up here in this part of the definition as well. So I have this lofted surface. I want to extrude it. Um, and I want to extrude it exactly the same amount as the slab that it's right next to so that I can join them together. Um, and that's just going to be under surface, freeform, extrude. And it's just going to borrow the geometry to extrude. And then the uh, slab thickness is going to be um, extruded in the Z direction. So this is an instance where you do want to use a unit axial vector. So unit Z plugs in, slab thickness plugs in, and you should have a slab that sits next to your original slab that borrows the same properties. Now, um, the, the very, very last step that you may or may not need to go through, and again, it depends on what you intend to do with this thing. If you're creating line drawings off of this model, then you want to join everything you possibly can. If you're only creating a rendering off of this model, then you don't really have to worry about the joins because vector work does not render through in a, a render format usually. Not always, but usually. So. Um, so I need to take this extrusion and this extrusion and join them together. And I want to kind of do it in a pretty clean way. So um, I could create another output uh, BREP uh, wireless connection. And I don't know where these are all going to wind up right now, so I think I'll do that. Um, I'm going to go to param BREP, plug this in. I'm going to call this one... Um, original slab. Just a regular B-Rep? B-Rep, yep. So once I make that a wireless, I can just drag that over, put it next to my other extrude, and then these two are going to be joined. So I'll select these two right here. Um, that's going under intersect shape and it's going to be solid union and it just asks for all of the values 
that are going to be unioned together. So um, the the key is, I think we may we may or may not be able to just join these two lists together. And I think it's another structure thing. So it's a zero zero zero, meaning that there are three. Uh, levels of branches and this one says zero zero meaning only two so but I'll try it it sometimes works so let me try joining them in like that and it looks like it will not create what I need there should be eight of them and it's creating all these so it has to do with that structure again um, what's the best way I want to do this huh no, no, that's a Rhino function. This is Boolean union, but it's the Grasshopper version of Boolean union. Um, so let me think. We've got a grafted list, grafted list. I could do that whole flatten graft thing again, but there's probably a smarter way to do it. did it okay um, so cross-reference I honestly don't know um, I don't use this function very often but I took a stab at it and it seemed to work so cross-reference is uh, basically saying cross-reference data from multiple lists so I thought that by that description what it meant is it's going to take one list and it's going to take another list and it's going to restructure them so that index item zero of the first list and index item zero of the second list will um, pair up and, and be a part of that list on the other side. Um, but it didn't really. What it did was it looks like it restructured each of those lists to match in terms of their branch structures. And so it worked out here, but um, if we have troubles, I, I may not be able to uh, conclude everything. So anyway, I'm going to turn some of all this old stuff off so that what we're left with is the slab. And uh, because that's a Boolean function, you're probably going to want to merge all faces. So I'll go back in here uh, under intersect. No, sorry, surface utility merge faces. Boom. There we go. Nice and clean. Okay, questions? Yes? Solid union. Solid. Intersect and shape. Okay, let me zoom out so you can see more of this and then I'll help you troubleshoot. <laughs> 